Yes, that is the actual game font. So, they finally let you lead the squad, and you're ready to get your tactics on. You know what's important for tactics? Squad drops. You know how you get good squad drops? Good beacon placement. Okay, so first things first. You gotta upgrade your beacon as much as you can. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I know some of you want to spend your certs as soon as you get them. Come on, we're almost 11 updates in, soldier. You need to get this thing pimped out. The beacon's cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds for every rank it goes up, from 3 minutes at rank 1 to 2 minutes at rank 5. And every second counts when you're twiddling your thumbs waiting for your beacon to cool down while the other team shoots holes in your entire squad. So, you put some beacons in your certs? Eh, close enough. Now, let's talk about where you should put that thing down. No. No. No, damn it, no! You want to know why you don't put beacons close to each other, soldier? This is why. One line assault gets past you for five seconds, and the entire platoon can't drop. Look how easy it is! You want to hide that one so close? Oh, I'm dead, but I got all of your fucking spawn beacons. Oh yeah, battle rank 11. You can have that kill. You need it, bro. You know what? Have some more failure. Look at how easy this is. Look at you let down your entire with this placement. Worth it. So worth it. <sighs> Alright, I'm sorry I yelled at you. What you need to do is make sure that there's at least 100 yards between you and the nearest friendly beacon, so that if one beacon goes down, they don't all go down. So, what else is important? Putting your beacon somewhere where it's hard to notice. Beacons have a shorter draw distance than players and vehicles, so it's best to put them somewhere up high or somewhere far off with a light assault, or maybe use an infiltrator to cloak over there so no one's looking at you. Subtly place your beacon off to the side somewhere when no one's looking and then bug out. The longer you hang around a beacon, the more likely people are to see you and try to attack you. And if they try to attack you, it's likely that they'll see your beacon as they approach you. And for the love of nanites, put that thing in some cover! Another important thing is to make sure you give your squaddies a good 5 second warning before you put down your beacon. That way, if any of them are dead, they'll wait till they see your beacon before respawning, and that way, they'll all spawn at once and you'll get a much more successful initial drop. As for the old method of using an ESF to fly up and drop a beacon on a tower really fast or somewhere else it's hard to get, I'd say no. Because when a lone ESF flies up to a spot and the pilot immediately jumps out, the other guys instantly know what's going on and they're likely already jetpacking up to your spot to take out your beacon. So don't even waste your time or your cooldowns. But where exactly do I put down my beacon, you ask? Oh, come on, soldier, you're at least 13, otherwise you shouldn't be playing Planet Side 2. You know how to think. I'll give you one last tip. You know where everybody usually puts their beacons? Well, those areas are nice, but easily predictable. Try thinking outside of the box and putting your beacon somewhere like that, except where the enemy isn't really expecting it to be. Remember, height and draw distance are your friends here. Okay, let's review. Yes, yes, no, yes, no! Maybe. Yes. You got all that? Great. That was all we have for today. Try to keep it short and sweet for you so you can get on and get back to the Good fight. Placement. Remember, like the video if you liked yeah, it because it does help me a lot. No and if you want to see more Planet Side 2 content no every Saturday, go me. ahead and hit the subscribe button because I promise I'll be good to you. See you next time, folks.